Hey, what's up guys? Today we're gonna to be talking about the Roomba 690. So I've been hearing a lot of good things about it. I wanted to pick one up for myself and see if it's as cool as the commercials show. So picked this guy up right here. We're gonna spend the next week testing it out. I wanna give you a real world experience of, of what it is for me day to day. The goods, the bads, seeing what it's like and uh, what it's actually picking up. So to set the stage, uh, I will tell you guys that I have got my wife, I've got two little girls, but then we also have two cats. I mean, there's hair everywhere. And uh, right now we've got a Dyson cordless vacuum that we use every single week. So we do vacuum every week with the Dyson, pick up a lot of cat hair with it. Vacuum, I'd say about 15 minutes, about 15 minutes uh, every weekend. So the house shouldn't be too messy, but I am really curious to see how incorporating the Roomba into the whole mix uh, is going to change things. Will we still need to use the Dyson? Will we not? I'm sure that there's gonna be some spots the Dyson's gonna be best for, maybe certain corners and stuff like that, but this video is going to hopefully answer most of those questions for you guys. The Roomba has been unboxed and is charging, so tomorrow will be day one, and I will be kicking that off while I am at work. So let's get started testing this guy out. All right, so I'm here at work. We just kicked off the vacuum for the first time using the app. So I wanna talk about some of the features that I like about this vacuum. First of all, I like that it is unattended and you can run it as much as you want to. You can do it a couple times a week or every day or even a couple times a day if you need to be that clean. I also like that it can vacuum under beds and furniture. Because right now with the Dyson, I am not crawling, laying on the ground, trying to get under the bed. This thing will do that all for me. Don't have to worry about that. So that is something that I'm really excited to get an area that I really want to get clean. Also a cool thing is that it avoids the stairs. We are running it upstairs and I don't have to worry about it falling off the stairs. It does have a, a sensor in the front that when it hits the edge of the step, it will not fall off. It'll just turn around and go back the other way. I also like that it has an app. As I did right now, I started the Roomba with the app. I can see the status, so it tells me that it is working in progress right now. It also tells me the time, the elapsed time that it has been going for, and, uh, and I do get a text when it is done, so I do know when it is finished and heading back to the base station. A cool thing that you can do is you can set a schedule, so if you want it to run at a certain time every day, or pick a different time for every day, you can do that. And it also has the history, so you can go back and see um, the history of the vacuum, what it did each day, what it found, how long it ran, um, all those different features and stuff in there. So now that it is doing its thing, we just gotta see what happens when we get home tonight and uh, see how well it did. So see you guys when I get home. So the Roomba ran today for the first time, got the text notification that it had completed and was returning home. Although I just got home right now and it's not there. So what happened to it? Um, let me show you where I found it. So if we go in the closet here, it got stuck behind the door. So now we know we need to keep the closets closed, but let's open it up and see what this guy got. All right, so this is what came out of day one. This is all, well, for the most part, all cat hair. And this is what we got day one with the new um, Roomba vacuum cleaner here. All right, we're gonna go ahead and grab it day two here. Pull this sucker out. Oh, this thing's already gross. So. Pop this guy open. Show you guys here. Okay. So not as dense as day one, it's still a ton, but that's insane. That's after just one day. So in one day we got that much more. All right, day three is complete. Let's pop this guy out. Take it downstairs and see what we got. Jeez, that's just after another day. All right, so we have it out here. Not allowed to do this in a house anymore. Wow, that is the next day. So I'm, I mean, obviously they're getting less and less dense, but 
Where's all this hair coming from? Jeez. All right, evening of day four. So this is day four of running the vacuum. We're gonna take a look right now and see what came out of this guy right here. All right, so that's what it looks like. Day four. I mean, I feel good that we're getting this much, but I can't believe how much we're missing on the Dyson. What we're gonna do is that um, tomorrow being day five, we're gonna run the Dyson and uh, see what the Dyson can pick up. Granted, these things are running for an hour as opposed to uh, you know, the 10, 15 minutes we actually use with the Dyson here. So, so we got day four. Wow, so this is the same day. I, I ran this and got all of that with the Dyson. I ran this and I feel like I'm getting the same with the Roomba regardless of the day or regardless if I'm running the Dyson or not. Um, I think the conclusion is we need to get rid of these cats. So typically I've been running the Roomba while I am at work during the day, but today I kicked it off when I got home and we were eating dinner and I got the text that it was finally finished and it was returning to home, so I thought I'd check it out, watch it return to home, see what happens, and as I'm sitting here in our bedroom with it about to return the home, it's sitting right here in the hallway behind me, in the doorway, bouncing around, about to get into our room, it turns around, goes the opposite way, and has been stuck in my daughter's room for the last five minutes while it's flashing low on battery. So, I don't know. I mean, watching this thing is so frustrating. It drives me crazy because I think, oh, return to home, go right home. Oh, I hear it. Is it actually coming out of the room? Oh, I see it. There. We'll see if it makes it in here. I mean, it's been gone forever. A bit of advice, don't watch it. Just don't. I was so much better off when this thing just did its thing while I was at work and I would come home, it'd be sitting here in its cradle charging, good to go. Now that I'm watching this thing, this is the dumbest vacuum I've ever used. All right, let's go find this thing. So it went all, th all through that room, died right here, spent a lot of time in here. Hopefully it was vacuuming while it was room and around. Went back into this room, like I said, so let's bring this. hair down here that needs to be cleaned out so something to keep in mind too is that with all the hair you need to make sure oh, let's see if we can get this in the light so all right down in here is full of hair and here needs to be cleaned out and then all of this in here you need to make sure that we're maintaining those parts not how hard oh Well, that's not too bad. I guess it just pops right out. Oh, gross. Ugh. All right, we got everything cleaned out of here and everything put back. This is everything that came out of just the rollers. Ugh. Still got to empty out that guy too. All right, I think we all get the idea of what it's looking like upstairs. Days are starting to repeat themselves now. We're just cleaning out the same stuff. So what I want to do for day seven here is I'm bringing it downstairs. Now that we're downstairs right now, there are a couple of things that I want to test out. We have laminate pretty much all downstairs. We have a big, thick shag rug that is in front of the couch. So I want to test those things out. I want to see how it's going to go through the chairs. I also want to test out this guy. So this is the virtual wall barrier. It's got a couple of modes on it. If you see there, we can uh, either set out a single line to make a barrier for it to not go across a doorway or wherever we want it to go, or we can set it up um, for a perimeter here and say put this by the cat, food and water, and um, 
and test that guy out. So bringing it downstairs, plugged it in, let it roll around on the laminate here. It seems to be doing pretty good. It's bumping into a lot of things. There's a lot more clutter down here as far as chair legs, couches, um, kitchen rugs, things like that. It went over the kitchen rugs just fine, but it did struggle with the big shag rug. So we've got the big shag rug here. It did not like it. It would not go up on it. We've actually even picked it up and set it on this rug and it pretty much just stayed in place. It looked like it was constantly thinking that it was hitting something. So as far as big, long shag rugs, this did not perform well on. We did set up the barrier here. I, I did move the cat food and water out to an open wall just to test out the perimeter uh, with this virtual wall barrier and it performed perfect. So set it up right here. The vacuum came right up to it, hit that virtual wall, turned around and went another way. I thought it was a great idea. I, I like having that and being able to set it up for um, situations like that. Now, as far as going under chairs, our chair legs aren't too wide, so most of the chair legs, it, it couldn't fit through. It would have to hit it almost exactly for it to go under our chair legs. But for the ones that it did make it under, it seemed to get stuck under there for a while. Instead of moving on to the next chair, it kind of bounced out of there and then went on doing its thing. Running this thing, it picked up quite a bit more than I thought it would. Now it makes sense that it's gonna pick up things. We do have the cats that are downstairs. Now if we open up the bin here, take a look at it, we can see what we got from the run downstairs. Now, keep in mind this was just one run. It wasn't multiple like there was upstairs. But uh, just to give you an idea of what a different environment would be, depending on what you guys have, this is what it is on laminate floors, lots of chairs around. Well guys, the week is over. I hope that was helpful. If I had to do it all again, between the Dyson and the Roomba, both being at kind of the same price, I would probably go with the cheaper Roomba so I can run it all the time whenever I wanted. However, the Roomba doesn't get everything, so I would probably pick up a cheap Kenmore vacuum so I can do the stairs, get corners, uh, you know, take out the hose, use it here and there. But I love the fact that I can run this thing whenever I want to. It will let me know when the bin is full, shoot me a text, I can turn it on and off whenever I want to. Those are just some great features to have. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful. If so, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button for more content like this, and I'll see you guys in the next one.